we are live, I guess. So, uh, okay, uh, we have uh, five o'clock, so we supposed to start. My name is Martin Kocorek. I'm from the uh, University College Prague, and I have the honor the, to be uh, uh, to be a chair of this session, session twenty one. And I would like to ask uh, um, Sun Cica Vukovic uh, to start with the first contribution. So please. Feel free to uh, introduce yourself and then start. Uh, just some rules to, to everybody. We have uh, 10 to 15 minutes per, uh, per contribution. And then we have some time for uh, questions. To ask questions, please use the, the um, symbol raised hand. And let's start. Thank you. Stage is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, Sunčica Vukovic, and uh, today I will present uh, this paper, Enhancing Sentiment Analysis, Tackling Class Imbalance and Hotel Reviews, uh, written together uh, with uh, my colleagues, okay. um, Anes Moric, who is a, a master candidate at the uh, University of Montenegro Faculty of Economics, and also uh, Professor Liljana uh, Kršća. Uh, the outline of my presentation, uh, so I will start with an introduction and uh, to um, uh, explain the significance of tourism uh, for the uh, Montenegrin economy, then uh, briefly explain the sentiment analysis and its impl implications, and then uh, continue with data used, methods that are applied, uh, our results obtained in the study, and uh, to conclude with discussion and some um, key points. Uh, so uh, we can start by saying that uh, basically Montenegro's economy uh, heavily relies on tourism, which is uh, making it susceptible to economic disruptions such as COVID-19 pandemic that happened. And uh, in the year 2020, tourism revenues in Montenegro dropped by 86.8%, uh, uh, which led to the negative growth that can be seen on the graph of 15.3%. Uh, this indicates um, vulnerability of the country's economic model. And this decline in uh, tourist uh, season income um, basically highlights the, the necessity for a thorough review of tourist attraction strategies in the post-pandemic, or as we can say, the recovery uh, period. Um, this paper will use uh, the sentiment analysis to understand positive and negative aspects uh, that are expressed in guest reviews. Uh, this is providing uh, insight into the impact of uh, tourism elements uh, on uh, tourist um, experiences. Um, and the, the focus of this research is to address the class balance issue uh, in uh, sentiment analysis, specifically in hotel reviews, uh, where we aim to contribute to the tourism sector by providing several insights into how machine learning can effectively be applied to sentiment analysis uh, by emphasizing uh, the need to overcome uh, challenges that are associated with class imbalance for reliable results and also accurate results in um, sentiment analysis for uh, hotel reviews. Um, here, um, we can uh, define it by saying that sentiment analysis is the process of extracting subjective information from text as opinions, emotions, or attitudes, and we can classify them as either positive, neutral, or negative sentiment. Uh, it is important for the tourism industry because we can gain a better understanding of how tourists feel about various as aspects of the experience, identify areas where tourism experience can be enhanced, develop targeted marketing campaigns to attract tourists with specific interests, and also monitor the effectiveness of those campaigns when they are um, realized, what is the sentiment after it has been completed. So uh, this is definitely a powerful tool that uh, we can use to understand the sentiment, identify trends, and also make uh, better strategic decisions. 
the data that we uh, have used was uh, obtained by web scraping uh, for the TripAdvisor website, and the total number of downloaded reviews was uh, 10,983. Uh, here in these graphs, uh, you can see that it's quite evident that representation of reviews related to hotels operating in uh, the southern region of Montenegro, which is um, given in orange, is much higher than in other regions. This leads us to a conclusion that uh, tourists compared to the central and uh, north uh, northern regions are far more interested in the southern region of Montenegro, which is the coastal region. This is also in line with the official tourism data obtained from our uh, National Statistics Office. Um, when we look into labels, so positive or negative reviews, we can uh, also see that uh, the majority of them uh, is positive and most of them are in the southern region um, far. Uh, so um, when it comes to uh, the tourist arrivals, uh, only um, only uh, approximately 9% uh, were registered in the northern region, 14% in the central and the rest in, um, in the southern region. So uh, it is the most visited and therefore the most uh, reviews were obtained uh, for this as well. Um, the, this um, dispersion of uh, sentiment distribution carries uh, some significant implications. First, a uh, high uh, percentage of positive reviews indicates uh, general satisfaction of guests that are staying in Montenegrin hotels. Um, this is uh, also uh, due to exceptional uh, tourism uh, resources, quality of service, or some other positive factors that can contribute to uh, the overall positive experience. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is a smaller number of negative reviews, uh, but they also require uh, our attention. So, for example, for the southern region, we can see uh, almost 7,000 positive and around 1,700 uh, negative reviews. Um, they can indicate some aspects of um, this smaller portion of the overall reviews um, that indicate uh, the need for improvement. So it's very um, um, needed to analyze those uh, specifically and to indicate to the hotel management uh, what uh, they should improve uh, in the future about their offer. Um, here, the text of each review is first tokenized, breaking it down into tokens, so the smallest meaningful units of text. Uh, then uh, tokens are transformed to a uh, lowercase letters to achieve consistency within um, the analysis, and therefore we eliminate the influence of different letter sizes. Uh, and in the next step, uh, the word stemming uh, is completed during, using the quarter stemmer. Uh, this process uh, actually aims to reduce uh, word variations and to make them uh, only available in their most basic form. Uh, so we can group similar words together and reduce the dimensionality of this problem. Um, then we have divided the complete data set into training and testing data uh, in uh, a split of 70 30 um, and uh, a final uh, final uh, document term matrix contains 10,983 documents, as I said, which is basically reviews, and uh, 13,409 terms or attributes. Um, we experimented with two classifiers uh, in uh, this paper, uh, decision tree and support uh, vector machine. Uh, as the main uh, goal of this paper is to resolve the class imbalance problem, we looked into the previous literature and how this problem has been solved before. Uh, most of the previous research uh, actually uses uh, two of uh, these techniques, either oversampling or undersampling, which both have some, um, some uh, shortcomings. Uh, first, uh, the undersampling method can lead to the loss of important information because we are reducing the number of uh, uh, majority class samples, and therefore we uh, basically reduce the diversity of our data set. Uh, on the other hand, uh, oversampling methods increase the risk of overfitting because we are duplicating or multiplying the minority uh, class examples so we can create this excess information. 
Um, so um, in order to resolve these limitations of, of previous methods, we have applied uh, two uh, methods here to test uh, for class imbalance. The first one is undersampling 1000, uh, which maintains a thousand to 1000 sample size per class. And the other one uh, is uh, support vector machine pre-processing, where we implement uh, support vector machine pre-processing on training data, uh, add a new prediction uh, as the label, and then test on the uh, original data. And uh, now I will show the results of the entire uh, process. Uh, so firstly, without uh, any pre-processing uh, or undersampling, here are the results of the first decision tree and support vector machine models. Um, first, uh, the uh, decision tree 1.0 uh, model demonstrates quite promising uh, results in the sentiment analysis. We have high class recall for the positive class, uh, but, um, and this is given uh, with the sensitivity score of 95.5%, but the specificity score is quite low, around 50%. Uh, so uh, this requires improvements in order to better uh, identify negative uh, reviews. Uh, on the other hand, we have the uh, support vector machine 1.0, uh, which gives slightly better, better uh, performance compared uh, to the decision tree model, but uh, further uh, improvements in the specificity area are also required even here. The next one is uh, given, uh, the next results are given uh, after the undersampling 1000 procedure. And here you can see uh, some differences uh, in the scores, specifically uh, looking into sensitivity and specificity. Um, I'm focusing uh, due to the time constraints on uh, these uh, two um, uh, performance metrics, but uh, of course um, you can see all of them uh, on, on the slides and I will give a comparison in the end. Um, here, uh, this uh, Decision 3 2.0 model definitely improved the specificity, but uh, this happened at the cost of other parameters, which will, we will see um, in the comparison slide. And similar to the Decision 3 uh, 2.0, the second support vector machine model uh, improved uh, the specificity of the model, but here, um, these um, differences in other performance metrics are also positive. And the final uh, one is uh, the proposed uh, method, which is support vector machine pre-processing, uh, after which uh, the decision tree 3.0 and support vector machine 3.0 were generated. Um, here we can also see the improvements in uh, performance metrics. Uh, so for example, uh, we have a quite, um, uh, quite high difference in uh, the AUC metrics, the area under the curve metric in the decision tree 3.0 model, it's 0 0.7. And in the support vector machine, it's 0 0.97, which is uh, quite a good value uh, also with F measure and sensitivity specificity as well. Uh, so uh, support vector machine pre-processing did give positive results. And unlike the original model, um, in addition to uh, our targeted increase in specificity, so understanding the negative reviews and identifying the negative reviews, uh, it also gave us increased uh, value of other metrics um, as well. Uh, here on this slide uh, is given the analysis of performance changes between uh, these two models. So change from support uh, vector machine 1.0 to 2.0 is the same for uh, decision tree. So here we can see how did the undersampling 1000 procedure improve or uh, reduce uh, the, the performances. So in both cases, we do have the increase in specificity, but uh, this happened at the cost of the um, the other um, the other metrics. Uh, so um, our general comparison, because of this uh, the smaller reductions in um, in other performance metrics, we can say that uh, even in this comparison, support vector machine as a preprocessor uh, did give a better re a result compared to the decision tree as a classifier. Uh, but the best results we, we are definitely seeing when uh, comparing the original model with the support vector machine preprocessing. Um, this is happening because support vector machine is finding the most similar examples and adding them to the minority class. So finding the, the 
closest uh, examples to the margin, uh, which are found to be, uh, for example, customers or clients of these hotels that have the most similar behavior to the majority class, to the class of those, um, uh, uh, sorry, to the minority class of the uh, ones that gave a negative review. So this is how we are supplementing the negative class and training the algorithm uh, a little bit better. Um, so here we can see uh, an improvement in the performance of both models after the support vector machine pre-processing, including specificity as our target parameter, but also others. And um, overall, uh, we can state that it is superior uh, in uh, predicting and classifying um, uh, hotel uh, hotel reviews. Uh, we can conclude uh, by saying that this, uh, sorry, uh, this study um, uncovers um, uh, an efficient way for managing class imbalance uh, in, um, because it also ensures robust sentiment analysis of hotels reviews uh, in Montenegro. Uh, which is especially important because we are now rebuilding our tourism industry. Um, hotel review sentiment analysis is uh, critical for making marketing decision because it helps us translate unstructured feedback into usable insights and it helps uh, organizations or in this case hotels to connect um, with their customers to understand their preferences and in turn this will increase the customer loyalty and revenue and profitability growth as well. That's all from my side. I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Sushitsa. Uh, are there any questions? Please. Um... Okay, uh, no questions. So I would like to ask you, um, do you see any any uh, way for future for future um, research on this top, uh, topic, please? So what would be the um, next step? Uh, yes, of course. Um, well, um, uh, as, a, as a next step uh, of this, uh, it would be interesting to see how companies uh, incorporate the results of such research for their marketing decisions and to see if their profitability or customer loyalty mm -hmm. uh, and customer satisfaction actually increases. It would be interesting to see an actual experiment that uh, is um, some sort of a data-driven uh, decision-making based uh, on uh, such results. And then we can say that it actually gave some positive impact towards um, towards the decision-making and towards the overall profitability. But strictly from a theoretical uh, aspect, um, this is also taking into account uh, the um, uh, reviews in English. Uh, as we uh, used uh, only uh, reviews in English, it would be interesting to see uh, if uh, other languages can be incorporated into the model also, and uh, maybe to use for a wider uh, wider market as Montenegro is quite a small uh, country with, as you could see, around 10,000 reviews in total. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. It was great. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you. your evening today, uh, the gala dinner. So, um, now we're supposed to continue with uh, the article elaborating visual firm generated content to enhance the customer journey, number 150. So I would like to ask if uh, somebody is there. Me. I can see. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> Hello. So everything worked. Is working with you, so can we start straight away? Okay. So. Okay. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Sara La Presta. And I'm going to expose uh, this paper uh, done with my thesis supervisor, Blanca Hernández Ortega, 
entitled uh, Elaborating Visual Film uh, Generated Content to enhance the customer uh, journey. Uh, this research focuses on film generated content. Film generated content is defined as uh, messages initiated by a company and post on its official social media pages and can be presented uh, through different formats. Uh, this content aims to induce additional touch points, increase sales, and strengthen relationship with uh, customers. Uh, specifically, we study film generated content applied to social media. In the context of uh, social media, there is a trend towards visual uh, content, that is uh, photos, images, uh, and videos. The social media such as Instagram and TikTok have taken the top positions in the ranking of uh, users, leaving behind other classic networks uh, such as Facebook. And these uh, visually based uh, social media are furthermore promoting a new type of interactions focused on non-permanent uh, format, that is ephemeral uh, content. And here, ephemeral content is characterized by its fleeting nature and avoidance of posting text-only content and has become a central component for many social media platforms in recent years. Uh, this content is important for both film and users. For uh, film, 500 uh, million businesses employ Instagram stories to connect with their audience and 58% uh, of users report being more interested in a, a brand after seeing it uh, in a stories. And in, so in summary, our research fall within the scope of visual film generated content on social networks and specifically in the ephemeral content uh, environment. Although the literature related to visual-based social media is still scarce, we identify two main uh, categories. Uh, some research has focused uh, on the study of users and tried to determine uh, what motivations uh, lead them to use this type of platforms. Uh, thus, some researches have explored users' motivation, perceptions, and attitude based on conceptual frameworks uh, known as the use and gratification theory and the technology acceptance model. Also, the literature studies influencers uh, as new actors that have emerged in these social networks, and it addresses some characteristics of source, such as attractiveness or originality, examining their effect of, uh, on EWOM, customer engagement, and uh, purchase behaviors. Uh, following this review, we identify three main limitations. Uh, all, first, although ephemeral content is becoming increasingly important, there, uh, there has been little research on how customers interact with it. Second, there is little knowledge on how companies should design visual film generated content in ephemeral contents. And third, uh, we have not found work analyzing the effect of visual film generated content has on the customer uh, journey. Therefore, this paper aims to study the visual film generated content of ephemeral content post on social network and its role in the extension of the customer journey. To achieve this objective, we explore the ephemeral content from a visual uh, perspective. Specifically, we study how companies should elaborate this visual film generated content and identify the importance of certain visual elements perceived by customers through the sense of signs during their interactions. Here, we identify four elements that comprise the visual design of a publication, uh, that is uh, brand cohesiveness, authenticity, informativeness, and emotionality. The extension of the customer journey refers to a new touch point generated from user interactions with content posts on the social networks and we identify, identify the generation of two types of touch points. Uh, first, internal touch points would go away on the story but remain within the company's uh, social networks. And second, external touch points would go away on the story and the uh, company's social network. And here uh, we present uh, our model. And to achieve the objective of the study, we develop a dataset from a leader European resource operator 
and the unit of analysis is individualist run stories, specifically uh, 525 Instagram stories uh, published between February and March uh, 2019 were examined and structured by observations. Uh, our database contains image and videos. The images uh, have been directly analyzed. However, to analyze the videos, we had to perform a uh, previous uh, conversion and uh, all the frames uh, composing each story were extracted. And afterwards, uh, all the videos and photo content was uh, analyzed. And the analysis of uh, all this content was performed with uh, artificial intelligence. And regard the independent variables uh, of our uh, study are four, brand cohesiveness, authenticity, informativeness, and emotionality. These variables are based on the theoretical framework of uh, Holbeck and Mackey, and the operationaliz operationalization uh, sorry, uh, of the variables uh, was done in two steps. Uh, first, we use artificial intelligence to objectively uh, measure the element of visual content and obtain the labels that describe the content of its Instagram stories. And second, we use a, a liquid, a, a content analyze, a analyze, analysis tool to examine uh, this tag and obtain the visual content uh, element generated by the company. Uh, brand cohesiveness is measured with the use of brand colors in the story. Authenticity is measured with uh, honest, sincere, and revealing content. Informativeness with uh, content related to cognitive processes, including information about uh, an experience, the search for cognitive causes and reasons. And finally, we measure uh, emotionality with the content about positive emotions such as uh, optimistic uh, styles or negative emotions, such as uh, uh, anxiety, sadness, or, or hostility. The extension of the customer journey collects user responses uh, by measuring the number of clicks they make following uh, their interactions with the female content. Uh, these clicks lead uh, to new customer interactions with the company beyond the story, inside and outside the social networks, and reflect their decisions to continue the journey with the firm. Uh, internal touch points were measured by profile click, uh, clicks, sorry, while external touch points refers to website clicks, email clicks, link clicks, and call clicks. Uh, Instagram provides this data to the, to the firm. Uh, for the results, uh, we developed a two equations, a seemingly unrelated regression model. And to avoid problems uh, of non-normality of the data, we use the robust maximum likelihood estimation procedure. And the structural uh, model was estimated with the data 17. And the results of tenure uh, as, uh, are as follows. And uh, our study offers uh, three important contributions to the literature. First, the paper performs an objectively and transparent analysis of visual film generated content post on social networks using artificial intelligence, which allow us to determine what type of content uh, films should publish on how they should design it. And second, uh, as opposite, uh, opposite to the permanent content traditionally uh, analyzed in social networks, this work analyzes stories as ephemeral uh, content by exploring customer response to these new formats. And third, the study uh, is one of the first to measure the consequences of visual film generated content on the customer journey. Uh, in this way, the paper contributes to understanding how customers continue the, uh, their customer uh, journey. So thank you very much, and I will be happy to answer uh, any question or su suggestions you may have. <laughs> thank you very much, Sara. Uh, I guess we have a question from Sanchita. Uh, Sanchita, are you still there? Uh, no. Oh, she, oh, sorry. Okay. Um, 
In the chat, there is a note from Sanchica for you, I guess. So I would like to ask you if uh, what would you recommend to uh, to the entrepreneurs uh, to 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 do in in order to uh, achieve a better results? Okay, um, I think my recommendations uh, going through uh, experiment with their or their own uh, content. For instance, uh, here we propose uh, four different uh, elements that we analyze, but I think that uh, depend of the content, uh, the context on, or the firms or the type of customers they, uh, they go uh, and they need to communicate. The entrepreneurs and firms uh, need to experiment with their content and identify uh, with, uh, with type of uh, visual content is better for uh, their results. For, for example, I think that uh, some firms uh, could, uh, could obtain better results with uh, emotional content, uh, try to uh, induce uh, some sentiments or uh, come with the um, va uh, values of the films. And uh, on the other hand, other films uh, could uh, obtain better results uh, with informational content or more uh, uh, cognitive uh, content. So I think that depends on the context or the films that uh, is uh, needed to explore different kinds of contents. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, we have to continue with the article uh, called "Emotions in Advertising and Their Connection to Consumers." Consumers. So I would like to ask if uh, the article number one one two. Uh, yes, I present. Hello. Hello. So, and you are uh, Liliana? No. Yes, you are Liliana. Liliana Rocha. Hello, Liliana Rocha. Uh, welcome, welcome. And please, if you could, can, can uh, introduce yourself and uh, start with your presentation. I... Hello, uh, my name is Liliana. I am from Peru. I am talk talking about emotions in connection uh, with consumers. Okay. It looks like you are muted. No, it's okay. Okay. I start. Uh, yes, please yes. feel free to start. I start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Liliana Rocha, and now I am going to talk about is emotion in advertising and their connection with consumers. Uh, emphasizing uh, a leader in the context, the social, privacy, and cultural habit of consumer change uh, completely as a consequence of COVID-19, which uh, showed that in difficult circumstances, they are more receptive to a factist uh, message, as with emotional uh, content are more likely to generate word of mouth and are shared more online than as white 
why to emotional appeal. Emotional appeals are like advertising stimulate that arouse consumer emotions, influencing their taste for products, uh, attitudes, and decision toward purchase. Uh, advertising uh, has involved uh, over time and emotions are not included in advertising with the aim of emotionally connecting uh, with consumers uh, for the purpose uh, of influencing their uh, decision making. Uh, there is a, a strong and positive correlation uh, between consumer uh, perception and online advertising to emotionally uh, engage the consumer. A storytelling is like a story that seduces, uh, remains, mobilizes, and engages uh, through the emotion, uh, brings a better understanding of the message, and generates greater empathy in consumers. Uh, in Peru, uh, brands in the banking sector seek to reinvent themselves after the, the pandemic and send a message este, uh, of reflection on union, motivation, and companionship to face uh, the new normal in a more positive way. Uh, research question. Uh, what emotion does accompany uh, this uh, 2022 unite nothing can defeat as generating senior in engineering students at uh, the private university in Lima to persuade them in their purchase decisions? Uh, methodology. Uh, the paradigm and design is phenomenological because it describes the meaning of the actions of a study population when they experience the same phenomenon in common. The approach is qualitative uh, by analyzing their experience and opinion that help to explain the phenomenon under study. And the sampling is theoretical based on the situations or data to be incorporated throughout the study in order to develop the theory until a uh, rushing, the theoretical saturation that is produced uh, by a sufficient distribution of quotes, uh, categories, and, and tens. A semi-structured interview what you said is has as greater flexibility than the structurist want and needs advantage of adapting to the interview so that they express their opinion more spontaneously. And the data uh, were analyzing according to the thematic analyze that uh, consists of identity, organizing and distributing the themes and categories for the understanding of, of the case to be studied. Results and discussion, uh, storytelling and advertising, uh, the, particip the participants consider a uh, BCP and was uh, as one on the largest band because uh, it is a reliable and well position positioned uh, that to its larger number of consumers. Uh, when they hear a uh, BCP, uh, they seen of a large company, a leader in the market that provides many services such as credit cards, uh, loans, among others. Um, they consider that Paulo Guerrero is a ideal person for this spot because uh, he's very influential uh, for his leadership, confidence, security, uh, and motivation that he strengthens in his message to all Peruvians. To most forward and resume a grown uh, red town they had before the pandemic. A positive uh, attitude toward the at half a high scale from recall uh, than negative one. Um, the influence of a brand on the consumer purchase decision, uh, mass participants respond uh, that they saw the spot on television and YouTube uh, regarding the clothing on the characters and location in the spot, they consider that it in, is appropriate because it's a very casual and, uh, and in line with everyday life. However, for the vast uh, majority of participants, uh, they should have included some uh, same in the other regions of Peru, Coas, uh, Highlands, and Jungle. Uh, the sense 
uh, they remember the most are when Paolo Guerrero gathers everyone on the fields and makes them hot each other, forming a circle and talking about leadership. And he did with the national social team. And that is why his participation in the commercial is an excellent way to attract the public attention. Saying he is a representative figure for the leadership, strength, and security for all Peruvians. Uh, they also uh, feel that the band wants to convey to people the integration of diversity and that all its services are for everyone equally and no one shall feel discriminated against. And uh, all participants uh, like the spot, especially uh, Paolo Guerrero tells his team for uh, 2022 uh, with a strong motiva motivation, the team and a lot of illusion referring to the diversity that exists in the country. Uh, emotion generated by the campaign, uh, this 2022 together, nothing can defeat us. Uh, all the participants agree that the emotion generated by the campaign are, are joy, hope, pride, um, nostalgia, motivation, commitment, and longing. Joy because uh, despite the difficulties, the participants are going throughout, uh, they have to get fighting for their dreams. Hope because together Peruvians are stronger. Uh, pride for being Peruvians and being able to move forward uh, despite the difficulties of life. Uh, nostalgia that arose from the pandemic and uh, the difficult moments that occurred do it to, to the loss of family and friends. And a motivation because no matter how many complicated situations arise, they will always find a way to, to get ahead. Commitment because the band involves its clients on, in other regions of Peru in mixed campaigns an emotional at arouse positive or negative emotion that uh, motivate consumer in their purchase decision. This has a greater relevance uh, for uh, COVID-19 and many brands began to include emotional content in their ads uh, to boost purchasing them and encourage the population uh, to overcome this post-pandemic crisis with message of resilience and psychological support to cope with the situation. Uh, in conclusion, uh, it is concluded that the emotion, emotions generated by BCP uh, campaigns this 2022 unite a uh, nothing can defeat us in senior engineering students between 19 and 25 years old are joy, uh, hope, pride, nostalgia, uh, motivation, commitment, and longing to be Peruvian. Uh, most of the interviews uh, throughout it was a good commercial that has generated a lot of nostalgia and strength with the mission conveyed by Paolo Guerrero. Uh, likewise, the vast majority of participants consider the Paolo Guerrero message is a lineage way the BC, uh, BCP brand as the leader of the national team and the market, as it a, a seeks to motivate everyone to add a team accompany, accompanied by BCP, which will always uh, be your support. Uh, lim limitation, uh, the distance and chains of shootless of the part on the interviews. E, and the scarce presence of women signs most on the men tend to study engineers. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Liliana. And I would like to ask the audience if uh, anybody uh, has a question. Uh, not yet. So Liliana, I would like to ask you if uh, you mentioned you used the uh, semi-structured interviews and if you faced uh, any difficulties or how many interviews uh, did you go through actually? Uh, 
Uh, I think you are on mute. Mode. Can you repeat in Spanish, please? Yes, I would like to ask because you mentioned uh, you used uh, as a method uh, semi structured interviews, right? Can you hear me? Uh, I Lina. will answer. I will answer for her. I am the co-author. Also, we uh -huh. use a semi-structured interview because we can. Um, we have a interview guide with some questions, but we also have the flexibility to include or remove some of the question regarding the the answers of the of the participants. So that's the reason that we choose a semi semi structure interviews so we have uh, some some questions but we can add or, or erase uh, according to the to the conversation okay thank you very much thank you it was great so any other questions there no so in this case I think we should continue with the article number 90 uh, called Mobile Marketing Determinations in Consumers' Purchase uh, Intention. So. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Well, can I start? Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. Great, welcome and please uh, if you could introduce yourself and straight go for the for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Sarah, and I present uh, the article "Mobile Marketing Determinants in Consumer Purchasing Intention," written by me and my partner Taylor Oliveira. This is the agenda of, of why we will be presented today. The choice of this investigation. Sorry. The choice of this investigation was because they are increasingly different mobile devices and user has a wide range of devices with them. Uh, therefore, companies have a great potential for optimizing their marketing strategies as they can act in a personalized, individualized way wherever, whenever the customer is. For companies to be able to hack effectively on mobile marketing strategy, they must know the factor that influences an attitude for mobile marketing and consequently for the pressure intention. Therefore, uh, this study focuses on, on the analyzing factors that can determine, determine attitude and the pressure intention to make more adjusted and effective decisions for the organizations. Uh, the object of this investigation is to identify the detriment that influence the attitude for mobile marketing and consequently the Iberian consumer pressure intention. Uh, focus on the purpose objective. Three research uh, questions were made. Page one, a favorable attitude for, uh, for a mobile margin has a favorable influence on the person intention. Uh, H two, the factor that can influence the given consumer to have a favorable attitude, acceptance through mobile and consequently lead uh, to the intention to the person certain product or service, are uh, percent uh, ease of use or trust. Uh, H3, the fact that may influence superior consumer to have an unfavorable head to acceptance through mobile marketing and consequently not lead to a person intention are security, privacy, and complexity. Uh, here, here are the, the, the conceptual model uh, for, for this investigation. Uh, to respond to the, re uh, the research object, uh, we, we use a quantitative methodology through a questionnaire. A questionnaire was carried out uh, uh, among the Iberian population, Portugal and Spain, and sample consists in 73 responses. Uh, the questionnaire includes uh, multiple choice questions to characterize the, the sample and the Likert scales for, uh, uh, for the question related to factors under analysis. Here we are the, the results, the characterization of the sample. Uh, we can see that uh, it's provided by both individuals from Spain and Portugal. Uh, the, the sample is comprised of 
female individuals aged between 25 and 64 years old, um, mainly uh, located in uh, Galicia, in Spain, and the north of, of Portugal. Uh, Consider education qualification, a good part of Spanish uh, sample have doctor, and Portugal, it, they have bachelor and master degrees. 72.6% uh, of the sample is employed. Considering the, the, the descriptive analysis of the variables of the model, it appears to, that the respondents tend to agree. Um, if we see the average, tend to agree with the states made in the victims of personal ease of use, privacy, and confidence. Disagree with the items about personal intention and neither agree or disagree with the remaining variables. To validate the constructors from the model, uh, we verified the key, key MO value, Bartlett test, and the percent of variance. After completing this test, the reliability of the construct was, was checked using alpha cranbar, cranbar alpha. Uh, all the values were fit and we will make uh, a linear regression. Uh, we're, we're made two linear regression. Uh, um, two linear regression will carry out to verify the connection with the variables, to verify the determined factors of attitude was made a, a, a multiple regression. Uh, we check the linearity and the ANOVA test uh, and we see that the p-value is less than 0 0.05. This means that the independent variable has the ability to explain the variation in the dependent var variable. We see the, the adjusted R squared was considered uh, for all the variables that you can see in the, in the table. And that this one explains 58.7% uh, uh, attitude. Looking at the significant values, we found that perceived needs of use, security, and complexity had values above 0 0.05, so they can they are not statistically uh, significant. In the analysis, the relationship between attitude and intention uh, was uh, was used a simple linear regression, uh, and uh, in the hair R square. Uh, the value was 0 0.519, so attitude can explain 51.9% uh, uh, the intention. These are the, the, the parts that I uh, that we co collaborate or not collaborate. We can see H1, H2B, and H3B were co co collaborate. The another one, uh, we can do it. Um, the conceptual model was updated with the conclusions of this study, as you can see in the screen. In the response uh, to the, the, the research uh, object, it was concluded that the fact that the most positive influence, the attitude, and uh, consequently the presentation wa was the trust, and the negative factor was the privacy. It was found that uh, a favorable attitude from mobile marketing affects the barren consumer in danger. Taking account to contribution to organization, the, they can make better decisions and develop the communication more efficiently to, with the, the consumer. This study is relevant to academic com, uh, com, uh, community, so uh, they do new studies uh, about the subject, a uh, new perspective. As the limitations, as the gaps, uh, they are uh, some lack of studies on the topic uh, about uh, the popula Iberian po population. We study not not study of a few constructs that influence attitude were, were studied. That um, the result is uh, limited to a small uh, sample. We would like to to have more answers. And uh, the type of sample was the convenience uh, that is uh, a, an issue. Therefore, it uh, suggests um, uh, that a, a future a customer uh, questionnaire that contains more variables to influence attitude and personal intention uh, to a greater uh, number of uh, of uh, uh, response in the future will in the future can consider the effect of COVID-19, which not considered uh, in the in this study. study. Furthermore, uh, we suggest similar study 
to be carried out uh, uh, considering the pandemic uh, and post-pandemic period. Uh, thank you. I'm available for questions. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to ask if are there any questions for Sarah? Well, no questions so far. Sarah, I would like to ask, would you be so kind and put again, show us again the uh, the slide with the results, with, with the graphs? Because I saw there something very interesting. This one? No, the previous one. Uh, no, no, no. The, the, the graphs, I mean. I do graphs. Yes, sorry. this one, yeah, this sorry. one, yeah. Uh, if you can just uh, explain why the community of Madrid uh, number is so low here. Uh, because it's the, um, the sample, uh, the convenient ex uh, sample. Uh, the study was focused on my, uh, my, uh, uh, my uh, team works, my, my colleagues, and expand to, your, uh, to, to them teams. So focus on the Galician. Uh, okay. yeah, because okay. near the Universidad of Vigo and focus north of Portugal, that's why I work in Skype, uh, uh, is because it's a convenience, this, uh, this, uh, this value is a bigger one than Madrid, uh, that uh, if you was in the crowd, don't, don't be, don't will be. Okay, okay, thank you very much. And how many responses did, did you get uh, together? 70, 74. 74, okay. Yes, it's a, 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 a low Okay. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Enjoy you. your evening. Thank you very much. And I think we should continue with uh, contribution number 107, Fostering Sustainable Innovation. So I would like to ask if, uh, if uh, either Zornica, yeah, Zornica, Jordanova is there. No. So the number 107, fostering sustainable innovation. Zornica, no. So maybe later. So uh, let's uh, skip to number 18. GSP internet users based on their navigation preferences. No, not yet. So last but not least is the number 25, uh, measuring leadership through C-E-L-I-D-S. Hello, nobody's there.
Uh, well, I see there are still some uh, some uh, participants, but it looks like there are no more presentation in this session. So I will now uh, end this se sessions. So thank you very much to all of you. It was great. And uh, or is everybody there for presentation? I see uh, Jose Rice now. Hello. So no more presentation. Okay. So thank you very much once again, and uh, it was great to see your presentation and uh, have a nice evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you bye. 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.